by precision farming techniques. We very much consider these as to be associated with the arable sector. And over the last 20 or 30 years, we've seen that sector develop techniques such as steering guidance for harvesting equipment and variable rate application of nutrients and of sprays. Um, and now we're certainly seeing these techniques being developed very much from the dairy for use in the dairy sector. And increasingly, we're seeing uptake of these techniques by dairy farmers. Our latest results show that about 10% of dairy farmers here in Great Britain are now using some form of precision farming technique. Um, most notably, these are probably things like uh, GPS guidance for fertiliser application, but increasingly we're seeing a raft of techniques being developed for the sector. Now historically, in arable systems, these techniques have really um, been used to um, sort of save time, save fertiliser, save fuel um, by identifying uh, variation in both nutrients um, in fields and variation in grass and crop yields in fields as well. And when we start, when we consider arable systems, we really can see the level of variation in large arable fields. Now, from a dairy farming perspective, we actually quite often blanket treat a lot of our grazing platform or our silage platform with the same level of nutrients and we don't really go into targeted uh, individual feed management. And some might argue that we actually don't need to on dairy farms, but actually some of the latest dairy research that we've undertaken here within, within DairyCo and a study associated with SRUC in Scotland and in Harper Adams over in Shropshire, we have found out that the level of variation that we see in silage fields is significantly higher than what we would have imagined. In, a, in that research study, we have found somewhere between a level of 6 tonnes of dry matter per hectare to 13 tonnes of dry matter per hectare difference in grass production over the course of a season from really what would appear to be a visually uniform field. And that, that, that finding is not alone. Um, certainly we've seen the similar results in Northern Ireland in research that's been done in silage fields there and we're seeing similar levels of variability in grazing uh, platform uh, results from New Zealand. So we're seeing a significant level of variation there. And there are a number of causes for this variation. These can be down to things like soil compaction, um, and in our recent Dairy Co study, we've actually found out that tractor-related compaction can result in a 35% reduction in grass yield. So this can significantly impact and cause variability across the field. In addition to this, nutrients is obviously is a major source of um, variability within and between fields. And actually, some of the most worrying statistics that we've actually seen recently is 8% of our grassland fields across the dairy, beef and sheep sector actually are, at, are not at optimum levels for phosphorus and for potassium. In addition to this, actually only 18% of our fields and 18% of our grassland soils are at optimum levels for pH. Now we know that when you have too high a pH or too low a pH, this can significantly impact on grass yields. We can see up to a 30% reduction in yields. So again, this is causing a significant level of variation across many of our fields. So can precision farming techniques really be used to help us manage this variation that we're now starting to see in dairy fields? Well, certainly there has been very little independent research done to date on the use of precision farming techniques in dairy systems. However, one of the latest studies that has just come out of New Zealand has shown that by individually managing dairy grazing paddocks as opposed to blanket applying fertilizers P and K, they find that they can achieve savings of up to five to seven between five and seven thousand pounds per year um, by that targeted application. And certainly there is a role for techniques such as the targeted um, soil analysis um, and using GPS guidance in uh, dairy farms to help apply fertilisers. One of the recent studies that we have seen actually when we looked at the level of fertiliser application and the variability in it in, um, in on grazing pastures is actually there's a 35% level of variation in the amount of fertiliser that's being applied. So 35% of the feed is actually not getting the optimum level of fertiliser. 
And probably one of the most exciting areas that is now being developed specifically for the dairy sector um, predominantly or for, and for grassland um, areas is the area of grass measurement. We're seeing a lot of new techniques being developed, um, techniques such as unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, are now being um, developed um, across the globe. These are small um, micro-light type drones that go up and actually take visual images of grass to get an idea of grass cover. We're also seeing techniques such as ultrasound and spectral imaging being developed uh, to help us start to measure grass on farms. This is an area of research that Dairy Co have actually been quite active and been involved in in the last sort of uh, six months or so in a study um, related to SRUC up in Scotland and taking place at Harbour Adams University in Shropshire. And researchers there at both of these institutions are looking at new techniques, namely spectral imaging in the form of NDVI measurements and uh, ultrasound techniques. Um, and seeing whether these techniques offer possible solutions to help us measure grass um, in comparison to your traditional sword stick um, and plate meter measurements. Now, NDVI measurements and spectral imaging is, really stands for Near Difference Vegetation Index. And actually, how that actually works is a green and healthy grass plant with lots of chlorophyll will actually absorb a lot of the visible light that it receives from the sun. But it will reflect a large proportion of the infrared light that it receives. In contrast, then, a plant that's at an earlier growth stage that doesn't have the same level of chlorophyll or that is maybe lacking in nutrients and so is less green um, will reflect a large proportion of that visible light and it will actually absorb a significantly higher proportion of the infrared light compared to the healthy plant. So what we're doing now is we have techniques that can measure how much of this light that these, um, these plants are absorbing and we're trying to relate that to differences in vegetation cover and, and, and grass cover on farms. In addition, we're also looking at ultrasound techniques, which if you can imagine a depth sensor for fish on a boat, it works in pretty much the same way. So basically what happens is a, a device sends down a sound wave from a given point, and this may be attached to a cord, it might be attached to a stick, um, but it's, it's uh, held um, above the grass. And what that will do, it will send down a sound wave, and that sound wave, once it hits the grass, will be reflected back up again. And what the device will do is measure the, di the difference in height between where it is and when it actually reaches the grass. And from that, we can get an interpretation of what the grass height actually is and start to relate that to grass yield. So that study is taking place this year, and we're about six months into it, and we have done measurements on a range of different fields. Um, we have plots that have been compacted, we have plots that have received different levels of nutrient application. So when we talked about the variability earlier and what's causing that variation in feed, we can now start to see how these techniques help us identify that variability and actually um, how they work in different scenarios. Um, so really to include, when we're thinking about precision farming techniques, there is great scope for them to be used in the dairy sector. And it's really something that actually we're seeing a lot of new technologies and a lot of new uh, techniques being developed. But if we, if we are considering uh, precision farming techniques um, on, a, on an individual farm, it's really important that we actually know what these techniques are going to be used for um, and how we're going to interpret, it, interpret the data out of them. One of the, the key advantages of these techniques is that they do supply us with information that is otherwise quite hard to collect or quite time consuming to collect. Um, but on the negative side, they do obviously produce a large amount of data. So it's really important to know, firstly, what data you're going to collect and why you're collecting it, how you're going to collect it, and finally, how are you going to use that data, how are you going to interpret it, and how are you going to make best use of it to advise and, and make decisions on your farm.